The Crane M3 might just be the best gimbal you can buy for the Canon M50. And in full disclosure, this gimbal was sent out to me for the purpose of this review, but as always, the opinions are my own and the company had no saying in the making of this video. And the first reason I think you should really look at this gimbal for your Canon M50 or Canon M50 Mark II is the weight and size. It is the most powerful gimbal of its size to come to market. And this gimbal is even capable of handling some full frame mirrorless cameras. Now, traditionally, when you saw a gimbal of this size, it would only be available to work with smartphones or sort of GoPros or action cameras or little point and shoot cameras. This is sort of that small, super convenient form factor, easy to pack down, fit in any camera bag or a purse, what have you but you can also use it with much bigger cameras than ever before. But the gimbal still has all the popular gimbal modes. And this one has six modes, which are similar to all the top level, high level gimbals that you can buy nowadays. So you aren't sacrificing any of the features in this small little gimbal. The next thing I love about this gimbal is how easy it is to fold down and particularly this new feature that they've introduced, which is sort of like a three quarter or half fold down mode, where you don't have to break the thing down completely to put it in your bag. You can actually do sort of a partial fold down. So it makes it a quite a bit smaller, but then it's really quick to set it up again. And essentially all you do is you just take off the quick release plate, the camera's off, and you click this down into here, flip that there. Now we've locked that in, we've locked that like this. And now, once you take off the tripod foot, now that is a tiny little package we've got. That can just sort of fit in your camera bag or your purse or your small little bag. That is just super, super small. And when we want to go to set back up, instead of just having to go through and balance the whole thing again, just, we're just putting on our tripod foot. We flip that down. We unlock these. And then we just swap the camera back on. And how long did that take? I don't know, 15 seconds, something like that. So you've got a really quick setup and tear down, which traditionally has been one of the problems with gimbals. Even with the big gimbals, when you wanted to pack them down as small as you could possibly get them, there was a fair bit involved in sort of tearing them down. And then when you went to set them back up, you'd have to go through the whole balancing process again, which can be a bit fiddly. And if you just wanted to get one shot with your gimbal, then you would find it was less like you just, ah, oh, I can't be bothered. You just leave it in the bag and not use it. And so to that quick setup and quick tear down, I think, it just makes using the, the, the gimbal more convenient and I think it makes it more likely that you're going to use it. Now the next feature I love about this gimbal is the touch screen. You can control all the settings and all the functions in the gimbal from a small touch screen here on the back of the grip. And I think we've gotten so used to interfacing with touch screens from our phones and our iPads and, uh, and our cameras of course. And in the past, gimbals didn't have touch screens. And what you had to do is you just had some little buttons and dials and you push on them and they'll little be like a little LCD panel that would just give you a couple little letters or numbers and it was like a, a code. You'd have to know what that meant to know what uh, sort of mode you were in. This is actually a, a color touch screen similar to what your phone or your camera would have, which just goes, it allows you to click in, select the mode, you're able to tune the gimbal, change the strength of the motors, how fast the follow speed is, how smooth it is, or how quickly it reacts, reacts to your movements. So all the basic functions of the gimbal are completely controllable by the touch screen. And particularly for somebody who's new to gimbals, like myself, I haven't used a gimbal in many years. The fact that I could pull this thing up and I just felt like I was using my smartphone to make all the decisions and put in all the settings was really, really a step up from what I see with these other gimbals where you kind of got these weird codes and you gotta push the joystick once and push this button twice. So much nicer being able to control this gimbal uh, or control all the settings and configure the menu system just through the little touch screen on the back of the gimbal. Another thing you're gonna love about this gimbal is it's got a built-in battery with an eight hour battery life. And it just charges with a little USB-C cable that sort of comes in the pack. And you can just plug that into any sort of USB compatible charger and you can charge up the gimbal. 
But eight hours is a long time, and I think it's highly unlikely anybody is going to, in their normal filming, use eight hours of gimbal use during a day. So essentially that what that means is you are just going to come home at night, once you're done out for the day vlogging or shooting video or doing your sort of narrative, what have you, you're going to come home, you're going to plug this thing into the charger, it takes an hour and a half, two hours, depending on how much the battery is drained. It's done, unplug it, throw it in your camera bag, and the next day it's ready to go. You don't have to worry about fiddling and changing batteries in and out, and you don't have to worry about it dying because of that really long battery life. And not only will this gimbal work with your Canon M50, which I think this gimbal camera, camera combination is one of the best out there right now, if you do upgrade to a full frame mirrorless cameras, there is a range of different mirrorless cameras and lens combinations that will work with this gimbal. In addition to that, if you get a new iPhone or a new Samsung phone that has a really good camera and you want to use that sometimes to shoot some sort of cinematic smooth video, you can use that on this gimbal as well. You can also use this gimbal with your action camera. Now, if you don't know a whole lot about gimbals, you might think, well, so what? I can put a whole bunch of different stuff on the gimbal. Gimbals in the past have generally been seen as tuned to a specific white class. And that means if you had something that would hold sort of a full frame mirrorless camera, the motors would be too strong and it wouldn't work pop properly with, say, a phone or a point and shoot camera or an action camera. And I don't know what they've done or how they've done it here, but they've really designed this so it can work with a broad range of cameras, starting at a small smartphone and going all the way up to like a full frame uh, mirrorless Sony or Canon camera. So that means if you do step up, it can grow with you, but it also means if you wanna use it with your smartphone or action camera, it just makes it a really, really versatile gimbal to have. And the other really clever thing about the design of this gimbal, is the way they have kept this arm on the side here down out of the way of the screen. This allows you when you're using the gimbal in the sort of the normal position, you actually still have full access and full view of the touch screen. I will also mention with the Canon M50, you can actually fold this screen out and use it with the screen folded out. You just have to make sure that you are balancing the gimbal with the screen out if that is the way that you're going to use it. But even if you don't have the screen out, that's not completely necessary because you have access to the screen here and you can just see the way they've done the arm coming up like this. Traditionally, gimbals would have had this motor right at the back, and that would have mean that you couldn't see or easily access the touch screen at the back, which would make it a bit harder sort of framing your shots when you're out shooting. And the next thing this camera's got, which I never even thought that I needed or you would ever even see on a gimbal, but now that it's got it and I'm using it, it's actually pretty cool, and that is a light. It has a fill light on the front of the gimbal. And as a fill light, it will just take some of those harsh shadows off the face. This is certainly great for vloggers or sort of when you've got the camera up close and you're sort of getting a head sort of really close up shot of somebody's face. You can also use it in environments where it's somewhat dark and I wouldn't crank it all the way up and create this sort of flashlight spotlight sort of look, although you could and that could sort of be a creative way that you could use it. But what you can do is just turn it on, just turn it on the lowest setting, and it just gives a little bit of glow, just lights up the features on somebody's face, certainly looks a lot more flattering, and just allows the camera to get the correct exposure and get a really good image in that situation. So it's not like you're paying any more for having the light on the camera. So the fact that they put it in there, and the light obviously just runs off the battery in the camera, so it's, it's or the battery in the grip, so it's there whether you use it or not. And I think it's just a really clever, just extra little addition. It's kind of a bonus feature on this gimbal. And earlier I mentioned we have six different modes and all the same pro level modes that all the big gimbals have. And I'll just take you through those, how they work, what it looks like, and when you might use them. I thought I should just jump in here and let you know that all the example footage you're going to see is just shot with the Crane M3 gimbal and the Canon M50. Now it's the same sort of footage you're going to get out of the Canon M50 Mark II and everything is straight out of camera, no editing whatsoever. I also want to let you know that I think as I I'm editing this video, I was thinking if I am mainly doing photography, I think my first big investment is going to be an additional lens. 
But nowadays, with this gimbal around, if I'm actually doing video, I think my first investment would be a Crane M3 gimbal, mainly because it's small enough that I could take it everywhere and because the price point is similar to buying a new lens. And I think it really opens up some possibilities and, and that's why I really wanted to shoot all the footage using the kit lens, because you probably already have the kit lens. So if you get the Crane M3 gimbal, this is what it's going to look like. I'm also going to put a link in the description down below, which takes you through to a set of four different suppliers of this gimbal and allows you to instantly compare the best prices between these four suppliers. These are also affiliate links, which allow me to earn a small commission if you do buy through these links, but it costs you no extra and it helps support the channel and helps me keep making these videos. And I'm just gonna be able to control all the modes right here from the touch screen on the back of the gimbal. So I just go into mode and it comes at default, it comes up in what's called pan follow mode. Now pan follow mode is probably the most common gimbal mode that you would use. And I think that's why they made it the default. And all that means is the gimbal is gonna follow your panning motion, but nothing else. It's gonna hold the camera this way, perfectly still, this way perfectly still. So it is slowly coming and following your pan motion so you get smooth pans, but when it comes to everything else, the gimbal is just staying absolutely still. And pan follow mode is great for tracking, uh, whether you're tracking behind somebody or in front of somebody, it's also great for vlogging. It is the most popular mode because it sort of allows you to keep things really, really steady and sort of track along behind in front uh, or beside someone, but if they turn or move, you do have the ability to follow them. Uh, so with a few of the other modes, they either take that follow mode out or there is a pan follow mode where you end up getting the tilting as well. So if you wanna keep the, the camera just straight on the horizon like this and somebody's moving, but you know they're going to turn, then you want this pan follow mode. The other thing about this uh, mode, this is sort of the mode I would use for vlogging. And if you triple click the trigger here, now it's gonna turn back and it's gonna look at me. And this way when I'm walking, when I'm going around a corner, I just sort of turn the handle so I've got control of that. I can also, because it's pan follow mode, if I've got somebody beside me and I wanna get, I've got me in shot, I can push the camera away and turn it and now it's got me and them and then I can turn it back to me or I can turn it to the person on this side of me. So I think with vlogging, this is the mode that I would use as well. And if you're in vlogging mode, you got it pointing at yourself. If you wanna turn it back to the normal mode, once again, it's just one, two, three on the trigger that's gonna turn around and you're sort of gonna be facing forward in the normal mode again. Now the next mode is lock mode. That means when you put it into lock mode, whatever direction the camera is pointing is the way that is going to try to keep pointing. It doesn't lock on a subject like autofocus in the camera. It locks on a direction. So right now the camera is sort of pointing this way and no matter what I do, it is going to just keep pointing that way. But if I pan, as you can see, it is not following my pan motion at all. So that is lock mode. And you might use this mode for a sort of crane shot where you sort of got it on the end of a big long monopod and you sort of bring it up. That just keeps it going in one direction. It's a mode that you might use for hyperlapse when you're just trying to go down a sidewalk or a road or, or you're going in one specific direction and you know you're not going to deviate or you don't want to deviate. It means that if you accidentally turn your hand back and forth like this, the camera isn't going to respond and you're gonna get some sort of weaving in your hyperlapse. So that's another one that it's good for. And it can be good for tracking shots as well, whether you're following behind or in front or to the side of somebody. You just have to make sure that when you are composing that shot that you aren't going to need to pan. That's the important thing. As long as you don't need to pan, that is definitely gonna get you the most stable straight on shot. And that is lock mode. Now the next mode is follow mode. Now this is going to effectively follow all of your motions except for it's going to keep your horizon straight. So anything I do tilting forward and back or, or panning, it is going to sort of follow that. So you can see it is following my motion when I'm panning and if I'm gonna look down, it's gonna look down at something and when I look up, it's gonna look up at something. Now obviously it's just moving slightly behind what my hand is doing to just keep that smooth, smooth motion and in the settings in the gimbal, you can tune how quickly it responds to your motions, your hand motions. You can also 
uh, tune how fast it does those motions. So one is how quickly it responds. The other is how fast. Another one is how smooth, like when it's coming to a stop, how smoothly it stops. So really to figure out which which settings are best for which mode for whatever you're doing it's just all about sort of playing with it in the gimbal and in the few times we've been out with it we really managed to tune it in and find okay we're doing this shot remember these are the settings we used and we would switch over to those settings and use those settings so it's something that you really learn a, a lot about just by having experience of playing with the gimbal the next mode is pov mode and this gets you kind of like a drone like flying shot so this is going to respond to everything including your tilts and one way you might use this and i often use it like just using the joystick to get this going the way i want in a sort of flashlight position and now i can do this sort of flying through things and it just creates this crazy sort of smooth dream like it isn't something you would use too commonly and you wouldn't want to overuse this mode because it is really quite trippy but it is sort of an artistic mode that you could definitely use in sort of some situations. And you can imagine how crazy and cool that footage is going to look. Now the next mode is go mode. And I think this is probably one of my favorite modes. This is like follow mode where it's gonna follow uh, everything but my horizon motion going back and forth. It's gonna keep the horizon flat, but it's gonna do it quicker. And they say it's kind of like a sport mode. So if you're like running behind somebody or maybe if you're like got kids on a playground or something where everybody is moving really, really quickly and you sort of just have to, you can't let the gimbal be too slow. You sort of really gotta be on top of that action. This is this is go mode. It's such a cool name, go mode. Uh, anyways, I really like go mode and I definitely use it with the family or sort of when I'm running around. Uh, it's not as cinematic as follow mode or as pan follow mode, but I, I you could use it more of like an action scene maybe when you do need that motion to be pretty quick. But I think really where this shines is sort of as like a family mode. When you're following kids around, you want sort of the, the gimbal to be responding fast enough that you don't uh, miss anything. And uh, that's the go mode. Now this next one is so trippy. I didn't even know this mode existed on any gimbal, but apparently it's fairly common on all the gimbals now. This is vortex mode. So we click it into vortex mode and the gimbal goes down into this flashlight position. And then you use the joystick to create this sort of crazy twisting motion where the whole scene is just going upside down and it really creates a wild effect. And I must admit, when I first sort of found out about this mode on the gimbal, I thought it almost seemed like a gimmick. Like I was like, when are you going to use that? But uh, when we recently shot a video, I, I forced us to try to use that mode. I think it's the, it's the best scene in the whole thing. It is such a trip. It really creates this completely surreal scene and vision. The only thing I would say about it is you don't want to overuse this mode. This isn't a mode that you want to be constantly using because it'll, it would probably start to seem pretty amateur. But if you just use it a couple times in any given video or even once in a video, I think it is really unique and I think it can have quite an impact on sort of what you're trying to create. And the final mode, not one that I am probably going to use, is portrait mode. This is for your sort of uh, vertical video, for your sort of TikTok, or your Instagram, or sort of whatever comes next along these platforms. And um, yeah, I think it is useful for people that use vertical video. Once again, not something I do, but it's nice they've built it in and there's sort of a bit of forward thinking because vertical video is becoming sort of more and more popular. So this is your vertical video mode. Now this gimbal also integrates with the ZY Play app that gives you a few different functions. It does allow you to upgrade uh, firmware through the app. It allows you to dial in some of the settings through the app. It allows you to control the gimbal through the app so you can actually have it sort of follow the motion of your hand so you can actually move your um, your phone and it will just follow the motion of your phone or you can use it as sort of like a, a remote control it's got like a little joystick on there so you can control it so you could set this thing across the room and it can be sort of like a third cameraman um, it gives you that sort of control the USB-C port on the side of the gimbal also allows you to configure the uh, gimbal through the computer it also allows you you to upgrade the firmware through the computer. 
And with the configuration options you have in the computer, you can actually put in really micro settings. So this is for somebody who really likes to tune in their equipment just the way they, they want and put in very specific manual settings. And that allows you to tune the details beyond what you can do with the screen on the back of the gimbal. Now, for me, I'm just sort of a person who's just happy to sort of, uh, you know, stick with the common modes and stick with the common settings, and that was fine, and they've all worked well for me. But if you ever find, oh, I want it to be just a little bit slower than this, but not in the medium mode, or you think, you know, this setting's too fast and that one's too slow, you can actually go in the computer and really, really fine-tune that. And that's, as I said, also the way that you upgrade the firmware. Now, the gimbal comes in three different types of kits, and I will link all the different kits in the description down below. And the standard kit is going to give you the gimbal, it's going to give you the plate to mount the camera on, and it's also going to give you the mini tripod foot. Now, I don't have the mini tripod foot to show you. All I have is the full-size tripod foot here. So that's just going to give you the gimbal, the plate for the camera, and a small tripod foot. Now, for around $80 more, you get um, the next step up, you actually get a a larger tripod foot. Now the advantage they say of this larger tripod foot is it, it gives you a little bit more stable base, but it also gives you extra sort of handle. So it does give you, whether you're vlogging or you sort of want to get to a low shot like this, it does give you an extra bit of handle. And as I said, it does give you a little bit of extra stability. The other thing that this um, combo kit it's called has, it comes with a backpack, which is actually quite a nice little bag. I was surprised at how nice this bag is. Depends on whether you actually need a bag or not, but uh, it is a cool little bag it comes with. And it also comes, the combo kit also comes with the phone holder. Now, just looking at the prices on all of this, best I can tell, if you're going to buy the phone holder on its own, it's going to be pretty close to the price of just getting the whole combo kit. So I think you essentially end up just getting the bag for free. So in some ways I feel like, uh, you know, the bag included how many people are going to use the bag. But if I think if you bought the tripod foot and the, uh, the phone holder together, it's probably going to be uh, at or more than the total cost of the combo kit. So I think if you're going to use those two items, you just go ahead and get the combo kit. But if you're a tight on budget, there is absolutely nothing wrong with the standard kit. Now, in addition to those two kits, there is a pro kit. Now this is something that is very unusual and I think that's going to be really only for very, very specific use cases. And the pro kit comes with a microphone, a microphone cable, and a, an additional port that goes on the bottom of the camera to sort of allow that microphone to hook up and in and through your camera. Now, this is something I can imagine people using at sort of trade shows or anytime you're out doing almost like a news type thing, it's got the long springy cable that can go to the microphone and that would allow sort of one person to, to operate the gimbal and the camera, another person to be in front of the camera holding the microphone and passing it back and forth in a sort of an interview type format. So this is a sort of professional grade audio setup that Zuyun has made part of this whole thing. But I think it's very, very specific. It's only very for sort of very specific uses and I don't think it's for the general consumer. This is only the first in a series of videos that I am making about this gimbal. And if you wanna see the rest of the videos I have about the Crane M3 gimbal, I've just thrown a playlist on screen now. So click through there and hopefully we'll help you get the best results out of this gimbal or decide if this is the gimbal for you.